DDI is a Long Island, New York based agency that serves more than 1,500 children and adults with autism and related disorders. Founded in 1961, the agency has grown to include five campuses and 30 residential and day habilitation sites. John Lassard is the executive director of DDI and spoke with us recently at his agency's Huntington facility. Hi, I'm John Lassard. I'm the executive director of Developmental Disabilities Institute in Smithtown. We are at our Little Plains campus. This is in Huntington, Long Island, and this is one of our many school buildings. And this particular building uh, offers children with special needs early intervention services, preschool services, as well as school age services. Well, what's special about this is really the success that this pro these programs have. Um, our early intervention program, which cares for children from birth through three years of age, has been enormously successful in helping children achieve the gains that they need so that they can be normalized within their communities and attend their local community preschools and school programs. Likewise with our preschools, we have a tremendous success rate for these children ultimately being able to go back to the home district and be supported in their natural community. You know, one of the other special features of this campus that we're at right now is um, a 24-bed children's residence that we just opened in August of last year. Um, this residence was designed, again, for children who have severe disabilities, principally autism, um, and children who were either already placed out of state, so it's an opportunity to bring these children back to live in their own communities, closer to their families and friends, or it was for children who were at risk of being placed out of state because unfortunately there just aren't enough children's residential beds in the state to meet the needs. So the addition of our 24 beds, which now brings us to a total complement of 65 beds agency-wide, is really giving 65 families an opportunity to have their children um, supported by DDI and the expertise of our staff and also to be close to home and close to family and friends. Well, the challenges that we face are almost too numerous to count these days, it seems. Um, generally speaking, uncertainty. The whole system that we're in right now is just fraught with uncertainty. The OPWDD services, which support our adults and children with developmental disabilities, is transforming itself into a managed care model. Our special education services are still stuck with a tuition calculation rate for programs like ours that really underfund our preschool and school age programs. And when you don't have the funding you need, well then you end up with problems like trying to make sure you can retain quality staff because you need to be able to provide raises and good benefits in order to attract the kind of staff that these children need and deserve. Well, the children that attend our programs um, really come from the, the local public school districts. Uh, these are children where the school district has made the determination that the child's special support needs because of disabilities can't be met in the local district. So they look for providers like DDI and our expertise to ultimately serve them. So our children are basically children who, if they were not, if they did not have a developmental disability, would be serviced in their own local school district. And the irony in that is that the public school districts and the teachers who support children in the public school districts have an opportunity to earn far more salary than our teachers can. And that's because the way in which we're funded does limit the amount that we can pay in salaries. So our kids, uh, the kids in our program, are being cared for and taught and supported by teachers who are paid 30, 40 percent less than their peers in the public school districts. And the requirements are basic, are all the same. I mean, our teachers are as qualified to work in a public school district and vice versa. So there's no difference in the training, the expertise, the certifications of our teachers. Yet again, we're, we're saddled with a system that doesn't allow us to pay our teachers commensurate with what the teachers in the public school districts get paid, basically to care for the children that came from the public school districts. Well, one of the challenges that immediately comes to mind is the challenges that some of the parents of our adult children are feeling. Uh, parents who have been caring for their own adult children in their own homes and parents who are now aging themselves, uh, they're developing their own physical limitations, um, and they really need to have their children cared for on a permanent basis in some sort of a 24-hour supervised setting. And unfortunately, the days when they were funding for those kinds of services and providers like DDI could build 24-hour uh, su supervised group homes, those days are behind us. And 
while there's a lot of good things happening um, to provide more and new and unique services for people with disabilities, most of those services are not really well suited for individuals who really have severe behaviors, who really need that 24-hour support. And there's no dialogue about what services are available for those, ch for those children and for those families. So those families are naturally concerned. They, they feel like everything that's being designed and which is being put out there for families isn't really addressing their particular need. Now I know that it's been talked, that it's been, it's been said that there are thousands of families who have their names on waiting lists for some sort of residential placement in New York State. But I will tell you that the funding is pretty limited these days to only certain kinds of, of residential development opportunities. And for those families, uh, those parents who are aged, who are caring for their adult children in their own homes and have been for a lot of years, who are concerned about how those children are going to be supported in the future, well, we're concerned for them as well. And we need to have more dialogue and we need to have more commitment in terms of what we're ultimately going to do for these families and for these individuals who need our support. As a business, it's, it's really like no other business, uh, that's for sure, because we don't really get a chance to um, set the prices for the services that we provide, and we also don't get to determine how much service we're ultimately providing. So we're, we're limited by what allocations of uh, residential slots and day program slots and spaces in school children, uh, spaces in classrooms for our kids. So it really is, um, you know, just constantly trying to find ways to continue to be more efficient, to continue to deliver on our mission, and ultimately not to sacrifice quality in the process, because sacrificing quality means not giving these children and these adults everything that they need for later on in life. Well, the plan to address it is really to just remain vigilant in our efforts to bring awareness to the good work of programs like ours. We need to make sure that our decision makers up in Albany understand the value of programs like the one we're at right now. There's no time that's better in a child's life than their early, early years to try to achieve the gains that they're going to need to lead a normal existence later on. And there's numerous studies to demonstrate that early intervention and preschool programs that focus on trying to bring about these gains in children are truly successful and ultimately reduce the amount of supports that these children will need later in life. Well, I don't know that I have a particular message from my fellow CEOs. I think we're, we're all in the same boat. We're all feeling the, uh, the uncertainties around us. We're all saddled with the same challenges. I think we're, we're actually looking to each other, though, for solutions. I think we're seeing a lot more collaboration, a lot more sharing of resources, and opportunities ultimately to continue to try to provide the services we do with, um, with limited funding. What do I love about what I do? Well, I think what I love about it, what I do most, is just watching the staff do their work. I think we have an amazingly talented group of staff members at our school programs, at our residences, and our adult day programs. They are really, really, truly highly skilled professionals, and they make such a difference in the lives of the people that we serve. The other thing I like about what I do is the fact that our families have really entrusted the care, safety, and future of their children to us. And that's a, that's a weighty responsibility to have. But I like it, because I like to know that we're making a difference for these kids, for these adults, and for these families.